Good morning. Today is Friday, February the 17th. The time right now in Singapore is 10.45 in the morning. And over there on Wall Street, hardly anything moved, especially on, on the Dow Jones itself. Uh, there was no major economic release other than a what we call a medium impact uh, economic news relating to the producer price index. Now that came in slightly hotter than uh, market expected. Previously in December, the PPI, uh, the producer price index, uh, was at 5.5% and the market was expecting a dip down to 4.9% for the month of January. But what was released was 5.4%. So it was more than what the market expected, although it is marginally lower than the December number, but the market did not take it very kindly. Uh, right after this number was released, the market basically came back down uh, after maintaining a very elevated outlook uh, going into this number. So that was the highlight for the, uh, for the night itself. But there's another very low impact uh, data that came in, which is the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Survey. Now, this is an index that, uh, or data set that normally do not uh, hold the, uh, the, the headline, but what was released last night was eye-popping because the market was actually expecting a uh, uh, decrease uh, uh, from a negative 8.9%, uh, not 8.9%, uh, to uh, to seven to negative seven point eight, but what the market uh received was the worst data since last year. Okay, uh, since twenty twenty one, uh, the number came out was negative twenty four point three. That so that means it says that, uh, the manufacturing sector, as far as the Philadelphia Fact Manufacturing Survey is concerned, is showing us that there is a very serious dip in manufacturing capacity. So that could be laying the groundwork for the scenario in which a recession is going to be forthcoming. And that is something that we will have to watch, although it is not a very major high impact data set, but it does give us an idea how bad the manufacturing sector is in the States. So that being the background, we want to stay on the short side rather than the long side of this market. Although the, the fundamentals are telling us the US economy is definitely heading towards a recession, whether it's going to be a soft landing or hard landing, we do not know. But you see the technical is showing us a different data set. While the fundamentals are poor, we have seen that uh, equity prices has been trying to go up. So that uh, I believe has got a lot to do with the algos, the, the, the uh, algorithmic trading program trying to push equities higher. Okay, so between the two, something have to give. Either the technical win out this uh, contradiction or the fundamentals uh, eventually overrides the technical. Okay, so between the five, between the technical and the fundamental uh, factors, uh, as far as US equity concerned, we are still seeing uh, the contest being fought out. But I think slowly uh, we are beginning to see that the fundamental is coming uh, ahead. And we can see that in the S&P 500, uh, the market has tried to go up after a three wave pullback. Technically that should be enough for the market to rally beyond 4,200. But last night we have seen that the price closed on the weak note. And now there is another possibility the first three set of down wave okay could be the first set of a larger degree uh pullback you know let's say for example these three set make up one and then this this one make up two and then we we'll probably be seeing another set of three wave coming down and that could be targeting the four thousand levels the previous low here traded on end of january was a uh, three four thousand fifteen and uh by Equality, the target is at 4,025. So between these two set of number 4,025 to 4,015, the market could actually find a flaw. If this is just a simple pullback, getting ready for another rush higher. But if the market extends lower, then that could be a very different story altogether. And the key to knowing this is looking at how the market come off. If the market goes down be, uh, towards the 3,000, uh, 940 levels, then the market is telling us this is no longer just a simple correction. The market is getting ready to resume its longer, a higher degree downtrend. Okay, so do watch out for this possibility here. Over the NASDAQ 100, we've seen something very similar to what, what I've just shown you in the SP 500. Now we have a very minor three wave pullback that should be enough for the market to start to continue to resume its upswing beyond 12,881. But last night, the market closed 
on a weak note and there is a marginal breach of this very near term support line that could be anything or it could be nothing but if the market continues to go below this uh this support line then the nearest target for equality move here is 12,063 but there is another bottom here again similar to the s p 500 on december uh, sorry at the end of january at uh, 11,906. So between these two levels of 12,061 to 11,906, market may actually be able to find some kind of uh, support. But if the market extends lower, now again, very similar, I want to give you another alternative. The market goes all the way towards 11,700 or lower. The market is telling us this is no longer a corrective pattern. It is getting ready to resume its higher degree downtrend. Which means to say, uh, if you look at the weekly and the monthly time frame, then we are seeing the resumption of this down move starting from the beginning of 2022. Okay, so there is that possibility. So keep your eyes open to see what happened. Uh, especially tonight uh, because this day is the last trading day for this week itself we want to see what the market closes at over in asia we can see that the nikkei has uh opened low and this and it's currently trying uh struggling to go higher okay but we have seen the price has already taken up the minor support line here again uh it's quite similar if the market do a very simple three wave it could possibly find support at 27,173. And this is where previously where the gap is. Remember on Monday to Tuesday, uh, when the Tuesday market opened, it opens with a gap. And this gap has not been filled up yet. But of course, gaps are very common in the Nikkei 225. So it may not be uh, defi a defining factor. But I think what we want to consider is to extend the possibility of an extended decay implies. The market goes all the way down to let's say 26,800. 800 then that will be a different story the market is telling us that the market is getting ready to resume its larger degree downtrend okay and this market rebound is practically over okay and that is the possibility so don't rule out the possibility just yet now over in the shanghai composite uh we can see that the market yesterday tried to challenge the 3310 level which was last traded on monday uh uh in uh, the last day of january at 3310 market last night only managed 3308 which is two points away from this high over here and it failed and then in the second half of yesterday in the afternoon the market sold off and this morning is still struggling so for the time being it is still trading between this band of prices and the low side is 3212 the upside is 3000 310 so we want to see what the market does okay if it breaks below and breaks again break below this support line here then everything is going to come all the way down okay now over in the hong kong market we can see the hang Seng market is uh trying to find its footing yesterday there was a bit of rebound but it didn't amount to much uh even if it does rebound i think the market would be able uh would have to face very stiff resistance between twenty one thousand seven hundred to twenty two hundred twenty two thousand so anywhere between these prices i think the market will come under selling pressure which may bring the hang Seng index down all the way to this nearest support here which is the end uh which is the uh, January the 3rd okay at the beginning of the year we can see the market it was at 19,300 okay so there is this possibility the market may actually drift lower so when we are finished with the equity index for now let's go to look at the currency itself overnight we can see dollar came back a little bit uh, which also resulted in uh, the major currencies backpedaling uh, this morning we can see that euro versus dollar has already marginally breached the previous bottom here on February the 11th and uh, the low uh, the low currently is trading as 1.0655 and 0650 right now and uh, we can see that the market have a have a minor minor breach here and it may actually extend lower to challenge my target here 10480 okay over in uh, sterling sterling have a quite a clean break right now it not only broke the support line it also broke this uh jet uh, February the third low of uh, February the seventh low and it's currently trading at 1.1952 okay so it is on uh on route okay to 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 towards the 1.1840 levels okay if you have not already so this is the lousy time to uh to to engage in a in a short sell right now unless the market go back and test this support and resistance line okay over in the Aussie market, we have a bit of a gyration last night. Market attempt to go back up, fail, come back down this morning, broke uh, this uh, uh, February the 6th low. 
Currently, it is trading at 0 0.6852, already on the way towards my target at 0 0.6720 uh, levels. Okay, so market is on the way to this level here. Over in dollar yen, it's very clean break. We saw the dollar yen broke, okay, above the 132.90 the day before, and now it's challenging the previous high here at January the sixth high at 134.77. I think there's a very good chance market will take out this. And remember yesterday, I actually gave you another possibility. Market may extend all the way to 139. If that's the case, we are beginning to see the resumption of the bull market in dollar. So that is something that you want to consider. So we have seen dollar being falling since September last year. So that may come to an end at the bottom here at 127.20. Market now is resuming its uptrend on the basis whereby the last few data set that we saw, especially since last week, uh, 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 and including the non-farm payroll, we are seeing that inflation is coming back up again, and that will prompt the Federal Reserve to further tighten interest rates, and that is definitely bullish for the dollar. Over in dollar ca Canadian, we are seeing the market actually took out the 134.75, and it's already challenging my, my initial target at 134.87, Right now we are just trading just one touch below it but i have every confidence that it may it, it may actually take out the 135.20 okay so again using the same uh scenario i think i want to extend this a little bit higher i think the market if it take out 135.20 convincingly the market is en route to 136.20 another 100 pips more to go okay so there is still the possibility that the market may extend even higher now we are finished with currency for now let's go then take a look at gold market now the gold market is still very sick right now. The market has simply have not enough conviction to trade higher. But at $1,826 last night or this morning low, you can see the market is getting very close to this pivot point here. The pivot point is somewhere between $1,824. Okay, because previously we can see that uh, at $1,823 and about 90 cents, market couldn't go up. And then on the way down, as after it penetrated to the upside, on the way down, it held at $1,825.16. So somewhere between these two set of prices, I put it at $1,824.50, for example. I think that is where the, uh, we may see the return of some buying interest. And if that's the case, we want to see how the market react along this uh, price line here. Okay, at 1824 and a half. Okay, uh, there is a possibility the market may rebound from here, but we will have to see uh, confirmation based on price action. Okay, over in silver, if silver is going to be the guide as to whether gold has already bottomed, maybe the timing is a little bit premature because it does look like silver has a little bit more to go, maybe another a dollar more to fall before it can hit some kind of support level. Uh, that level is $20.58. Cents. So we have to see uh, until silver stabilizes and also show signs of buying interest. I think it maybe it's a little bit premature to go in to buy silver just yet. Okay, so look out for confirmation in the silver market before you rush in to buy. Okay, but I think long term buying is not wrong. I think it's, it's the right move to do. Uh, but again, it's all about timing. Now, yesterday, Bitcoin has a big run up above 25,000, but only briefly. Now, if you go back and take a look at the higher time frame, which is the daily time frame, uh, if I compress the chart, you can find that in October last, in August last year, the high traders was $25,200, okay? So I actually made a very short uh, video clip in Mandarin. Unfortunately, it was not in English. I forgot to do the English version. Uh, and I said uh, 25,200, 200 is uh is going to be key. If the market can actually stay and close above this level, it may extend all the way to 27,000, okay? But again, the market must, on the condition that it closed above 25,200, the market did not quite do it. It, it did went beyond that to 25,270, couldn't close it, and on a four-hour time frame, it actually closed below, and the market actually tanks towards the uh, second half of New York session, and it ended weak. Okay, so this morning there was a little bit of a rebound. So this is definitely very, very clear cut, a stock hunting exercise. Okay, the market wanted to go and challenge a previous high point. And if you do not monitor the higher time frame, you think that based on this structure itself, you'll notice that it is very, very bullish and it may actually go higher. And it can still, it may still go higher. The thing is that that uh at this point at 25,200, there was definitely a stock hunting exercise. Market managed to penetrate trigger some stop and then reverse immediately okay so this could be what you call manipulation so if this market can stay above 50 percent of the rise from twenty one thousand 
376, maybe there is still hope that the market can actually uh, rally. So right now we are near the 50% point. Okay, so a lot will depend what it does near this current level of uh, this 50% mark of 23,300 levels. Okay, so we want to watch this level closely. And, and if there's any buy signal here, there is still another possibility on a week to week basis this Bitcoin may still try to go up again. Okay, but in the meantime, definitely yesterday was a stock hunting exercise. It's, the same is uh, it's also evident in the Ethereum. Ethereum high previously uh, as of uh, Feb February the 2nd was $1,714.10. Yesterday there was this attempt to, uh, this there's this rally beyond that, way above this point here at 1742 And then it couldn't sustain and close back down. Again, using the same metrics, if we do a 50% pullback, the level to watch right now will be at $1,600, $602.50 to be exact. Okay, so we want to see how the market react along this 50% mark here. If you can find support well and good, that means there's still another chance that the market may want to rally, but if it does not and unravel all the way below 1,463, all is over. Okay, it means the rally is over. Okay, uh, we want to see Solana. Solana is actually mimicking what we are seeing in Ethereum. Okay, uh, Solana. Okay, Solana is mimicking something what we are seeing here. The market could not go beyond twenty four dollars and twenty twenty three cents. Uh, the highest it did was twenty four dollars and eighteen cents and started to reverse. And uh, in terms of posture wise, we have seen a very clean cut three wave. And this is not a very very bullish development. If this is the case, we simply have to join these two bottom here and see whether the market can actually stays above this line. If it cannot, then there is a risk that the market may come back down again. Uh, towards the low that we saw in $19.64. So this is definitely not a very bullish development, like I, uh, like I said. If the market fails to hold above this near-term support line, it may unravel all the way below $19.64, okay? And uh, we look at Cardano. Cardano is looking very similar to Bitcoin. The market went up uh, above uh, 0414, which is the previous high traded on January, sorry, on February the 3rd, and the high it traded was 0 0.421 and then unraveled. So again, the nearest support here is at 0 0.382. And if you want to do the 50% measurement, we will have to see whether it coincides or not. Very close, okay? The market 50% mark is at 0 0.383. So taken as a whole, I think this low at 0 0.382 should be able to hold for now. So again, this is based on technical outlook. And this is all I have for you for today. And uh, for those who follow me on my weekly market wrap, remember to register for my Sunday webinar at 8 p.m. Singapore time. And I hope to see you there. In the meantime, take care and be safe. Bye-bye.